Welcome to Quantum Mechanics. I really enjoy teaching from the McIntyre book because we start with a spin one-half system and we start with bracket notation. Now what I've found from students in the past is that they don't really understand what we're doing at first. It feels like learning a bunch of rules to a game that you're not actually playing and that just gets more and more and more complicated. But suddenly we're doing quantum mechanics from nowhere. So please bear in mind that these initial few videos learning this notation, you're actually learning to do quantum mechanics, it just doesn't feel like it because it doesn't feel hard. Just a little confusing. So we have a lot of terminology and notation which is going to be brand new. So a lot of this relies upon some understanding of linear algebra. So if you don't understand some of the terms I'm using, like basis vectors, make sure that you go back and you review some linear algebra and the math videos that I've posted. So the first thing that we are going to be working with are what's called ket states. So a ket is going to represent one of our quantum states. And eventually this will get complicated, but right now we're just going to write it this way. This is some quantum state. Now, something that I will introduce now is the idea of a bra state. And together this forms a braquet or a bracket. And we're not there yet, but first I just want you to know that it's here. And part of where all of that linear algebra stuff comes from is the idea that our cats and our bras live in separate vector spaces. So I just want you to know that this exists, so like the way you write it matters. These mean two different things. They refer to different vector spaces, but right now we're going to focus on kets. Now the idea is that our quantum state is going to be expressed in some basis. It's a vector space, so there's some basis vectors that we can use to span the space. Now, in this case, I'm just going to give them some, you know, one, two, three random numbers. And the key here to know is that for a physically meaningful ket, this needs to be normalized. And so eventually we'll talk about exactly what that, that means mathematically, but that gives us some uh, required relationship amongst these scalars. So this notation here, these are going to be vectors, our, our kets. And so anything that is a ket is in fact a vector, and our basis vectors um, are in this case these guys. And so that leaves a, b, and c just as scalars, and it can keep going depending on the dimensionality of your vector space. Now we're going to be starting with spin one half. So a lot of these tools that we're learning are going to seem quite simple because we're working with a simple quantum system, but it's going to generalize. So with spin one half, we have two possible states, spin up and spin down. And this is going to be in our Z basis. So most of the time, we're just going to work with the Z basis to begin with, and it, it's kind of arbitrary what direction you pick. But the same vector space can be spanned by other uh, vectors. So we can think about this instead as the x direction. And again, you can have a spin up an x, spin down an x, and what we do to denote that that's the x basis is we put these little, we put these x um, subscripts on that. And then when we have a y, we again have our subscripts. So you don't necessarily need to put the Z uh, subscripts, that's kind of implied. There are going to be cases where you're working initially in your X basis, maybe your operator is expressed in the, in the X directional basis, in which case you might want to write the Z subscripts to make it clear when you're starting to work with a, a Z basis. So please note um, that we write this to, to mean spin up and spin down in our X and Y directions. So, so far, we haven't actually done anything, but again, we're going to be expressing states as um, in terms of these uh, basis vectors. So for instance, what that means is that when you have any sort of spin state, that that could be, for instance, written as a superposition of spin up and spin down. And I've gone ahead and wrote that as a, a normalized uh, 
vector. I'll show you in a different video how to actually do that normalization. And if you wanted to, we could rewrite this by pulling out the one half, and you then have your up and your down in the Z basis. So this is the basic idea of ket notation, and we're going to get into how you calculate probabilities and expectation values and operators, and it's going to get really complicated, but we have to first start with just the basics of what does this mean, and recognize that we're always working within a vector space.